Hey guys, thanks for coming back and watching another video. Today I'm in the greenhouse talking about a problem we have every year because we're always bringing plants in and out. We're also bringing vegetables in and out and eventually the vegetables from our garden make it to our kitchen. So this problem even follows us to the kitchen. So I'll talk about today fruit flies and how to control them, the three best traps and a lot of other ways, probably almost tw over 20 ways I know to cut down on fruit flies and what to do to prevent them. So basically, if you're trying to identify whether or not you have a fruit fly or drain fly or some other type of insect problem, the fruit fly is about an eighth of an inch in length. It has a brownish hue to it. And one of the more interesting things about the fruit fly is it has red eyes. So when you swat one and you see the little creature has red eyes, if you have a magnifying glass, that's one thing you'll notice. It's very interesting. And it usually takes about one week to go from egg to full adult. So that's very rapidly a problem that can happen super quick. Now, one thing about fruit flies is they can come in off of the produce. If you've ever noticed, you'll bring in bananas in or maybe apples or something like that. And then maybe a week later, you have this tremendous fruit fly problem. Well, a lot of times the fruit flies can lay their eggs on the banana or other produce you bring in. So that's where they start from. They actually come in from the grocery store. A lot of times they're sprayed, but that doesn't always kill them. And sometimes grocery stores themselves have a fruit fly problem. So that may be where they're getting on the fruit is actually in the grocery store. So that's one thing to remember is that your produce itself is where they're coming from. Now, another thing, we're going to be joining us today. Another thing is that a fruit fly can be attracted to the smell of overripe fruit. So let's say you have some bananas in the kitchen and you have a tiny little gap on your windowsill, may not even be noticeable. Well, the fruit flies can smell that from outside. It's hard to believe, but they can. And they'll come in under that windowsill through an open window. If you left the window open in a nice time of year and there's not a screen there, or if there's a small cut in the screen or something like that, a fruit fly can come through the smallest, tiniest little opening. So that often can happen. Also around our kitchen door, we don't have a perfect seal, so they can come in that way as well. So usually uh, it, not always coming from the produce that you bring in is they find their way inside through tiny little openings. So a lot of times one way you can cut down on your fruit fly population is when you bring your produce in is the first thing you can do is to put it in the refrigerator so you can hinder that development of those eggs on the surface. The second thing that's extremely important to do, and I'll link this product in the description, is using a vegetable wash. You can get very safe vegetable washes that will not contaminate them. If you eat the apple skin or something like that, where you don't want your produce to be contaminated by some strong chemical, use an organic wash. And again, I'll put that link down there for you. But that's two important things to do is to limit their food source and refrigeration and washing your produce with the appropriate product. Now, later on in the video, I'm going to go over three of the most effective traps, and I'll just kind of gloss over them in the first part. Uh, the first one is going to be a vinegar trap, some type of vinegar or fermented um, vinegar, red wine vinegar, balsamic vinegar, or apple cider vinegar. Those three, I'm going to demonstrate exactly how to make the trap. And that is one of the most effective ways because they're attracted to that vinegar, and I'll show you how to do that. Now, the second type of trap that's very effective is a wine or beer trap. And that is also one of the great things that will attract fruit flies, wine or beer. And you can super simple to make this type of trap. And again, I'm going to go over that in great detail after we go over a few more products about identification and stopping them before it gets out of control. Now, the third type of trap that's most commonly used and that's most effective, I think, is the overripe fruit trap. And usually that involves either banana, apple, cantaloupe, something that's gonna ferment very quickly if it stays out on the kitchen counter. So those are the three most effective type traps. And I'm gonna go into just a little bit later, I'm gonna tell you exactly how to make them and the best containers to use and some of the most effective ways to do it. Before I start making the traps, I wanna go back through some more ways to prevent rather than to try to cure once it's gotten out of control. One thing is, is the drains in your kitchens and bathrooms, that can be a breeding area for the fruit flies, especially kitchen drains where, kitchen drains, if I can say that right, kitchen drains in the kitchen where it's close proximity to the fruit that's become too ripe and that's where the eggs have hatched out. So the best way to do it in the kitchen is to make sure that your drain is clean. Now you can go two routes with that type of cleaner. You can go a strong chemical route or you can try to find a natural cleaner and I'll link some of that in the description as well. The chemical, the strong chemicals you have to be careful because if you have a septic system and those 
strong chemicals make their way to your septic system, it can kill off some of the beneficial bacteria in your septic system. So again, be careful. If you pour a lot of Clorox down the drain and you have a septic system, it could destroy the entire balance of the septic system and you might have a big problem at some point in the future. So if you do this over and over, you can mess that up. There's a product you can buy, and I'll try to link that, that you can pour into your drains that if you've poured too much cleaners and things like that in your drains, it can restore the beneficial bacteria to your septic system. Now, if you're hooked up to a utility where you just don't even have a septic system, and a lot of people in inner city and urban areas, they don't have a septic system. This is more of a rural um, or a suburban thing where you're away from the main center, city area. So you may, depending on where you live, that's going to determine whether or not you have a septic system. But again, you just want to be careful depending on what uh, the issue is. Now in bathroom drains, that's a little different in shower drains. Sometimes an unused shower drain can go months and months without use if it's in a third bedroom or guest bedroom. And those drains can be unused and it's the perfect place for those flies to start multiplying. And also you can have drain flies, but that's another issue. But you just want to be careful about using these products in your drains. Now on your sink drains in your bathroom, if you've ever noticed on the back side of the sink, there's an overflow. So if you started filling up your drain with a stopper down, it prevents your sink from flooding into the floor. So those little overflows are the perfect place to breed for the drain, not drain flies, fruit flies. They love to get in there because there's moisture. There's a lot of humidity coming up from the daily use. So a lot of people will say, well, I poured this chemical down my drain in the bathroom and it didn't do anything. That's because they're actually living in the and breeding in the overflow. So that's a little trick that I've learned over the years that you have to do the overflow. Take a funnel, pour something in there and rinse it out. Make sure you clean that area out. Maybe a mist bottle turned around, but that's the key. It's not the main drain, it's the overflow. Now, the most common place that a lot of fruit flies are going to breed is in the kitchen trash because someone will throw away a banana peel and that is the perfect place for the fruit flies to get started. Uh, so you want to make sure that these things that when you throw the apple cores, banana peels, you want to put them inside of a bag and tie it. Usually you can get the bags for free when you shop at the grocery store and just keep a few extras. But if it's just laying on top of the trash, the fruit flies make their way in there and they multiply rapidly. If the, there were some eggs on the core, on the skin of the apple or on the uh, banana peel, that is what happens in those trash cans. I had a friend that had a trash compactor and they did not know that you needed to buy quality bags because those bags kind of rip when the trash is being compacted down. They rip and a little bit of those disgusting juices get out into your trash compactor and it stays there month and month and month and month. And so you have this massive problem with fruit flies getting in there, breeding, and it's just a paradise for them. So make sure that you use quality trash compactor bags if you have that type of trash compactor. Now, if you're like me and you like to compost a lot of your leftover vegetables and stuff, you want to make sure that you put it in a sealed container and preferably outside of the living area, possibly in a basement garage, maybe the back porch, because even though these have tops on it, they're not perfectly sealed and it's very easy for the fruit flies to get in and out. So just make sure this is not stored in the living area of your house because you're going to have an explosion of fruit flies from all of the stuff that's decomposing and it's the perfect attractant for the fruit flies to go right to your compost bin. Now if you're like me and you like to open your windows in the spring and the fall and you like to let that fresh air in, you have to make sure that your window screens don't have any small cuts. A fruit fly is so small it can get in through some of the smallest little imperfections in your screen. So if you had a problem maybe a tear on one of your screens, that just is an open door for the fruit fly because they will stay on that screen all day until they find a way into it. And if your window's open, it's that little quarter of an inch cut, that's how they're going to get in. So just make sure you take a close look at your window screens and replace them if you need to. I've got window screens that desperately need to be replaced from a lot of cats we have, so they like to tear holes in the screen. So just make sure that your screens are in their best condition and use a high quality screen. Some of the Higher end screens have more of a strong strength. So if there's something hits it like an outside window limb or bird runs into it or something like that, or a cat scratches it, those really high quality ones don't rip as easy as the lower quality ones do. Now, if you have a lot of potted plants in your house, that can be also another area where fruit flies or it's their paradise. It's the perfect place for them, especially if you overwater your plants. You might want to make sure you have a soil meter. My good soil meter seems to be missing. I don't know what I did with it, so maybe I need to search the garden. This is my old soil meter, but occasionally, occasionally looking and taking a reading, 
a meter reading of how moist the soil is, if it's waterlogged or too wet. And you can also do that with your finger. But one thing you'll want to do is if you think the fruit flies are starting from your potted plants, take some neem oil and put it in a spray bottle. I'll link that as well. Uh, there's a specific neem oil I like to use because it's real neem oil. And a lot of neem oils, uh, there's not exactly the real deal. So the neem oil, neem oil I use is 100% neem oil and it's cold pressed. And I'll put the link to that as well. But that's another thing. The neem oil is all natural. It's safe. Won't hurt your pets, but it will get rid of those fruit flies if they're hatching out and buzzing around your house plant. Now, another thing to use to deter fruit flies is basil. There's a strong odor that comes from basil and you can put these on the countertops in cups and just put a little bit of water in there and it might actually root. But what you, the purpose of this basil is to repel them. They don't, fruit flies don't like the strong odor of basil. And so that's one of the things that you can strategically put around your kitchen and kind of drive them out. It's not as effective as some other things, but the smell of basil is one thing they do not like. Now, another great thing you can use if you don't have any basil on hand is essential oils, specifically lemongrass. They do not like the smell of citrus and that smell, lemongrass, uh, oil from the lemon, things like that will help. So if you have any of that on hand, putting some of that in a small bowl and let that air circulate around the room, that can also drive them out. But again, this is not as effective as the traps we're going to talk about, talk about and get that out a little bit later. Another thing is if your house is excessively humid, you might consider getting a dehumidifier because dehumidifiers, is they don't like arid type environments. They want that very moist, humid environment. So if you have too much humidity in the air, you might consider having a small dehumidifier in the kitchen and that can help as well. Now, another thing about commercially available products that will help, there are a lot of them out there like this one right here. But the problem in our greenhouse is we have to do this over and over and the cost of using something like this can get really you know, expensive. So we want to make our own traps and just spend the least amount of money with the most effective solutions. But if you just have a small problem and you want a quick solution, using specifically fruit fly traps that you can purchase on Amazon, put them on the countertops and there's special scent built into the glue and they'll go right to it. I prefer to do the homemade method, but either way, whatever you prefer, but you can buy a specifically made fruit fly trap that will help. I'll link that in as in the description as well. Now, in addition to the fruit fly trap in our kitchen, we have a plug in the, the socket. Uh, we have a trap that has a sticky glue around the front side and a special LED light on the back. I'll link that as well. Uh, in the house, it's not as critical to make my own because I can just stick that on the wall, but I do have to buy the sticky replacement pads. But if you want to go the do-it-yourself route and save yourself some money, I would recommend that over the commercial products. If you can't, if the do-it-yourself products don't work for you, then go to the more expensive route. But I think you ought to try both if you have a severe infestation. But first, try the homemade or do-it-yourself method that's coming up next. Okay, so let's get to the homemade traps. I'm going to bring you in a little bit closer and let you see up close exactly what we're doing. And I'll go step-by-step step on each of the three traps. Okay, so the first trap we're using these little dessert cups that comes with their own lid. I can reuse these over and over and over. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna punch some holes in the top of this. I'm gonna make three or four small holes so the fruit flies can get in there. And I've talked about this many times. I use this in the garden for so many different little do-it-yourself projects. And it's a lot easier than punching a hole with a knife. But this little tip heats up the soldering tool and we just put it on there and it goes through super fast. I make four holes there. And that is step one. And so we have our fruit fly entry points there. I'm going to take that off and I'm going to put just a little bit of apple cider vinegar in the trap. Now, a lot of people forget about the second step, and that's a very critical step. You want to put just a little bit of soap, any kind of soap, dish soap. I'm using Johnson's Baby because we have, sometimes we have cats that come into our greenhouse, so I don't want them getting into some toxic soap. So I'm just using a fairly safe soap. You're going to put one or two drops to break the surface tension. And what happens with that is that that's, that will sit on the surface of the top of the apple cider vinegar. And when the fruit fly goes to, into the trap, they fall through that surface tension. A lot of these fruit flies are so small, they can actually walk on the water. So that's one thing to remember is you want the apple cider vinegar and the soap in there. So there's another thing you can add to that is a little bit of yeast just to produce more carbon dioxide. Just take a small amount of yeast and put into your, just a tiny bit, you don't have to put a lot, 
but that's going to also help in the smell of that carbon dioxide will attract the fruit flies right to your trap and it will be more effective just swirl it around there to get it stirred up so that's the first trap is the apple cider vinegar trap and the smell you wouldn't think it would attract them because to humans the apple cider vinegar is kind of a repulsive smell so that is one thing you're going to try is the apple cider vinegar trick you can use this container over and over you might be able to get these in a takeout at a takeout restaurant you might just ask them if they have any dessert cups or whatever they call them i don't know but anyways we used them for as dessert cups that's the first idea about the apple cider vinegar trick now the second trap is the beer or wine trap and you can either use can, a beer can or wine bottle and what you're doing is you're going to leave just a small amount maybe just a you know quarter of an inch at the bottom whatever's left don't drink the whole thing and the same thing about wine you're just going to leave a little bit at the base then you're going to take your your uh, dish soap i had to get it out there <laughs> Take your dish soap and put in the can or bottle and it'll do the same thing. They'll be attracted to the fermented alcohol and they'll go right into the wine bottle or beer can and you can test it. You can pour it out on a napkin and see if you caught anything. But that's the second trap is the beer or wine trap. Now, the third type of trap is basically a piece of rotten fruit, apple, whatever you have in the house, banana, and just put it in the trap. Then you're going to put a little bit of dish soap around it. And is that piece of fruit or vegetable continues to rotten you're going to see it attracting fruit flies so what we're going to do is we're going to do the same method I let that cool off a little too much there we're going to put the same four holes in the top you want the holes big enough for the fruit fly to go through but a little bit difficult for them to get out and it's not impossible they can't they couldn't escape but it, it's going to make it much more difficult and as they fly and bounce around they're going to land into the soap you might put a little bit more soap than I put in there but anyways, that's the idea. You're taking a piece of rotten fruit and some dish soap. If you didn't have any of the vinegars, that would help. Now, let's say you don't have any of these handy little dessert cups and you don't have the pen that I'll link in the description. But let's say you have an old jelly jar. You could do something like that and do the same thing. Just clean it out. Or if you don't decide not to clean it out, the jelly in there might continue to ferment. And you could use something like a small kitchen funnel. You could tape around the edges of it to make sure they can't get out easier and do the same two methods there and there. And also, if you don't have your own funnel, you can make a funnel out of a piece of paper and some tape. So those are the three most effective traps I know of, but I know of three more that's rarely talked about, and I think they can be effective too. And it all depends on what you just have on hand. So let's go through those second set of traps, just in case you didn't have any of the ingredients for the first three. Maybe the second three you might have in your kitchen. Now, just to explain to you, this is, a, I'm getting off tangent in a tangent here, but just now I noticed a fruit fly walking around on my table and that's how effective these things are. It attracts them. And I can tell every time I get close to him, he flies off, but I can tell it's a fruit fly and he's buzzing around the traps. So that can tell you how effective these are. The greenhouse right now does not have any vegetables or anything stored in it, but from outside, I have the greenhouse doors open. One has came in just from that few moments of smell. That tells you how effective those three traps are. So sorry, I got off a little bit on a tangent there. Let's go on to the next type of trap. Now this trap is only, the only thing you need for it is a lemon. So you're going to take an empty jar, Put your lemon in it, and if you don't have a funnel, you could use the cap. You could punch some holes in the cap. I have a small kitchen funnel you just put on there. You're going to tape around it to make sure it can't, they can't get out through the sides, and it's just the effect that they go down into the funnel, and it's hard for they'll be bouncing off the sides of the funnel. It's hard for them to get out. So that's one thing, just a simple lemon. As that lemon starts to ferment and get older, it too will attract them, and they will be trapped, and eventually you can just take them take it outside or put some dish soap in it and just wash it out. So that's another thing, just a simple lemon can attract it to it. And the smell of the lemon in the kitchen is kind of nice. So when I was preparing to make this video, I wanted to go back and see if there were some really old recipes or remedies for fruit flies in the kitchen. Now the article I read said this particular one was over a couple hundred years old. It goes way back, but it has three main ingredients and one specific way to make it. You take one pint of milk, four ounces of sugar, and a teaspoon of pepper and you put it in a saucepan and cook it and leave it on the stove for a day or two and that is supposed to attract the fruit flies to it now me personally i don't think i would do it but it would be an interesting experiment to see if it does work but i did read where this was a very old 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 method sometimes in the past finding a lemon in the 
200 years ago, finding a lemon or some of these other ingredients was not easy or was not even possible if you're talking about some dish soap. So that would be an interesting thing to try that really, really old recipe and see if it worked. I have not, so I just thought I'd tell you, I did read up and do a little research and they said it was an old, old remedy. So the last type of trap that I've heard of many times, but I usually have the other products on hand, so it's not too hard for me to put those together. But if you didn't have any of those and you had yeast and sugar, which a lot of bakers do have that, you could try this trick, putting some warm water in a jar, a small amount of sugar, maybe half a teaspoon, and did I say sugar? I meant to say yeast. Uh, put a, a one teaspoon of yeast or half a teaspoon somewhere in there, and then maybe two maybe two teaspoons of sugar. So as that sugar starts to ferment, that carbon dioxide will also draw them to it. You want to use the funnel or the paper, paper funnel trick or actually punch holes in the lid. Be careful when you do that because when you do that, these metals, they have very sharp edges there once you do that. And just make sure that it's sealed so they can't get out easy. And that sugar and yeast, when it's fermenting, will draw them right to the trap. So that way, if you don't have any of the other ingredients, you can try that as well. So guys, in saying all of this, it's a lot cheaper to do it yourself. And that's why in the greenhouse, uh, I just want to do it that way. You know, in the kitchen, I use more traditional traps and some of the plug-in traps because it's less of a problem inside the house. But in the greenhouse, there's always fruit flies in here, especially in the wintertime because it's, uh, it's paradise to them. This is heaven when it's cold outside and they've hatched out. They'll just start flying around. So I like to do that. And there's always a problem with water. I have a lot of bonsai in here in the wintertime. So I'm always trying to make sure they have plenty of water. So that's another thing to remember is if you have too much water in an area, like a greenhouse or a cold frame, that's going to also help the fruit flies survive and multiply. So guys, I wanted to say one final thing. If you were looking at these strange vegetables on the table and wondering what they are, take a look at yesterday's video and you can see exactly what they are and how to grow them. If you're interested, if you're kind of an experimental grower or gardener, you might like to try that. And I just want to say thanks so much for watching. I genuinely appreciate every comment, every view. It's greatly appreciated. And every time I see a new subscriber, it just uh, makes me feel great to know that someone out there is watching and listening. So guys, have a great day. And please like and subscribe. I hate fruit flies.